Hi, and welcome to Journey to Journeyman, episode number six, starring the small yet humble Atlas 618 Lay. First of all, I'd like to thank all you guys for the comments and suggestions, the tips and tricks. I really appreciate that uh, type of feedback. It uh, helps me to learn. Um, it, it helps me to keep motivated. So thank you very, very much for that. On this episode, I make what I believe is my best looking and most complex fail to date. Um, there's two guys out there that know exactly what the failure is and it's a pretty big one. Um, Baseline 46 and my brother know exactly what the big fail is. See if you can guess what it is. I made a lot of little mistakes but uh, there's a one big one that <laughs> caused me to turn this into a little piece of scrap iron. Anyway, also on here I'd like to um, say I did not ask uh, the, the, the forum that I talked about last time that said why don't I ask before I make something and get uh, help before I did that. That's the Yahoo Atlas 618 forum and if you got one of these it's an excellent resource. Um, and Hank over there is the one that uh, suggested that. There was a couple other guys but um, thank you Hank for that suggestion. Great, um, great suggestion. The reason I didn't ask on this is because I knew that it's just like asking your dad when you're 11 can you drive his car. He's gonna say no. I know you guys would tell me don't even try to make this so I just snuck out and did it without asking. Uh, also Hank has talked about safety on here that I didn't mention safety glasses. I honestly thought that that was so rudimentary that I didn't need to bring that up but guys don't be dumb wear safety glasses when you're in the shop when when I was in high school we couldn't even walk into the shop without safety glasses so so don't be stupid wear your safety glasses now let's take a look at the order of operations on this project so I have to cut the round to square then machine the square to size drill the holes cut and mill a slot mill to size and then fight off the ladies so I printed this blueprint off Tom's Techniques website and now it's time to see if it'll work on my square stock, I mean my round stock to see if it was square enough, big enough for that square I should say, and it looked like it was going to do it. So I went on and squared it off on the bandsaw and decided to use the milling machine to get the uh, part square. Now, since I'm not really good on my technique so far on uh, using this milling attachment, this was kind of like uh, going to take too long. So, I'm pretty good with the four jaw chuck. Decided to stick it in the four jaw to get it all square. Well, what I'm trying to do here is get this block built. And so I needed that uh, 2.06 .06 by 1.65 there. And what I thought is I measured it initially with this because the scale says 1 to 1. And so this is absolutely right on. However, comma, what's going on is um, this is actually uh, less because he changed the drawing and because of that he just changed the numbers but the scale of it is is, is old so I need to this looks like it's the right size but it is too short so I'm gonna mill out a new piece well the first time around was the, the failure and I didn't show a lot of that, so this is basically how I made that uh, square stop. The first thing I needed to do was get both sides of the round stop flat. And uh, once that was flattened to the right dimension, then I could figure out how to get it squared off. Boy, this is really smooth. I mean, holy cow. If you close your eyes, you, it's just 
this silky smooth. Anyway, time to um, give a measure. We're going to cut this to one inch and fifteen thousandths. It's at one inch, one hundred and twenty-six. Since this is my second time around, I decided to try to hold the workpiece a little differently, and that's a bad idea. It's not really only two of the jaws are really holding it tightly, and the other two are just kind of resting up against it. So this what I'm doing right now is 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 not a way to do it. And I noticed that I had to take such light cuts that eh, time to send it uh, to the bandsaw, cut off most of that, and then get it back in the four jaw. Now that I got one smooth surface, I'm going to put that against the, the back of the four jaw. And now we should be able to get a second true good smooth surface. All right, now that every surface is a machine surface, this is the last measurement I need to do. And it's only like 20 thousandths more to go. But there's a little part of the round that is still left on this edge. So, um, get her tightened down, take it down to the last dimension, and that should square off the whole block. I didn't want to mar up my machine surfaces, so I came up with these soft jaws, and they're little bands of aluminum, and I epoxied some rare earth magnets. And so now I don't have to fight the, the jaws to get them in there. I just stick them on there, and they, uh, they stick on there nicely. And they don't mar up my, my finished work now. So a little project that is really turned out to work out nicely. Now it's time to get her all marked up and all the other dimensions for the slots and the holes. Get those um, marked out. One of the things I had to be real careful of is whether I'm using the top and marking down or from the bottom and marking up. And on this one, I marked it the wrong way so I had to start all over but I had to make sure the dimensions were where they should be once all the holes were located I needed to uh, put a center punch on there and the reason I'm doing this is I don't have DROs and all of the fancy equipment, so I've got to kind of do, use the, the layout method and, and, and try to get it as close as I possibly can. And with this, I was able to, to center drill and get those holes pretty doggone accurate. Now, the two that look all goofy there are basically for the slot. I'm going to use the band saw here and get as close to the edge of the slot as I can. Now, one of the things I failed with is I ran a center drill <laughs> down the center to cut that little piece out and nicked it a little bit. You'll be able to see that nick in it here in just a little bit. Now, time to get the, the uh, milling attachment squared off and start cutting out that little piece. And, and basically, I'm cutting out that little uh, piece that was left by the drills in that slot. And then I'll start squaring the slot up. Well, I'm going to mention this again, but I'm going to tell you right now, with this little milling attachment and the light cuts, I get so many splinters in my fingers, and they're so small that I have to use magnifying glass to, to get them out. So, I mean, it's working, but i got to figure out how to keep those splinters out of my fingers. Now 
after I got the back part milled out and kind of square, this is where I'm really do, using the conventional milling on the, the one side to take that to dimension. And once I get that to dimension, I'm going to start plunging down until I touch the back side and take that to the layout line. So basically, this is just going to layout lines instead of DROs. Uh, someday, hopefully, I'll get a DRO and or fancy equipment, but right now, it's just t touching layout lines. Now, on this side, the conventional milling is going the other direction. So even though it, it is different from the other side, this is conventional milling on this side. And once I get it to the layout line on the side, I start walking it back and get it to the layout line in the back. After I do some filing, it's time to check my dimensions. Well, here you'll be able to see the little nick I made. When I was getting that slot out of there, the, the two little drill marks I was trying to get together, I got my drill bit a little bit too close to the layout line and threw a little nick in it. And now it's time to lay out that little pad that's going to have the witness mark on it. And that's about 15 thousandths higher than everything else. After getting the piece squared off into the vise, it's now time to take off 15 thousandths everywhere except for that little patch. The problem is, on my setup, I can't go quite the entire depth that I need to, so this is going to have to be done in two passes. You can kind of see at the top there, there's about, oh, a good 3 sixteenths, you know, maybe a little bit more. Now I flipped it over so you can see it on the bottom there, that there's still some of that surface that needs to be uh, taken off. I just didn't have the travel. So, um, getting it squared back up in the vise and going to mill that part off. Well, since I'm using layout lines, you can see I got a little magnifying glass somewhere, and then there's a little 15 thousandths pad that's left over, so it didn't turn out too bad. One of the things I should have done was measured everything before I pulled it off of there, and I'm using the layout lines, like I keep saying, to, to get my dimensions. 
but I should have measured it. It was just a little bit too fat on the inside and I saw what side, so I put it back in and, and squared that off. Now here was a part that's kind of challenging. I had to try to figure out how to mill the, the steps now. So I had to figure out how to do it con you know, with conventional milling. And so part of it I did from the bottom. Um, I used some plunge cuts here. Here's the first time I'm figuring out that that plunge milling really cuts pretty nice. And on the, so I flipped it over now to do the other step using plunge milling and it uh, didn't leave quite as good of a finish as the other ones but once again this is just a learning process and I'm learning that that, that plunge milling works pretty decent. Now guys I get a thousand splinters from this this milling. It leaves these little fine hair type of uh, slivers and holy cow every time I touch that piece I get several splinters. This is the finish of the one where I took my time and not too bad. This one's not too bad either but had some plunge cuts in there and it a little rougher but uh, I think I can polish her all down. Well since I don't have any fancy equipment to make that uh, radius on there I decided just to grab a little holometer and scribe it out there and see if I could cut off the big chunks and then sand off the little chunks. Now I'm going to try to sand right up to the line that I scribed on there. Unfortunately, I sanded um, a little bit too much on the back. You can see my little pad there. I sanded part of that off of there, so that kind of bummed me out. But I see that sanding will work. So I went to show my son how this thing worked, and I realized, oh no, this thing doesn't fit. This is for the wrong lathe. I was devastated. And yes, I'm trying to get it to fit, but it still won't fit. Hi guys, I'd like to share a couple of lessons learned. And lesson number one is, if you want to make the part right, you have to make the right part. This is for a 10 inch lathe. That is a six inch lathe. So you can see it's not gonna work. I'm probably going to try to redesign uh, this piece to work on there. So stay tuned for that. I might uh, get this micrometer stop working, but it's going to take some uh, re-engineering on my part. Also, the milling attachment, after hours of, of working with it, I was able to get it to work fairly well. And the best way it works on my setup is to use conventional milling versus climb milling. Now, for you novices out there, and yes, I am a novice. I'm just learning this from YouTube. Uh, conventional milling is when the cutter is going against the work. If they're going in the same direction, then that is climb milling and it doesn't work as well on this setup. Also, I learned that plunge milling works as well. Works pretty decent on here. So plunge milling and conventional milling. And for me, the conventional in the vertical axis works the best. So... Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, maybe down the road I might be able to get this to work. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the next Journey to Journeyman.